<laughs> this recording started. It's 42! I have no idea what that means, but it is episode 42. <laughs> it's the answer. It's the answer? Okay. I thought it was the secret. No, it's the answer. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, no, 42 is the answer. Yes. It's the answer. What's the question? Life, universe, and everything. Ah, okay. No, that, it's, it's the answer to the question, though, but... Anyway. Anyways, moving on. Uh, where the heck do we want to start? Because there are some interesting things that happened in the last, you know, five to ten days or so. Um, Actually, let's start with the Miko thing. It's right at the top. Yeah. It, it, uh, I have mixed feelings about this because I honestly would have liked to see Miko get some legs. Miko's not dead. It's not dead? I, I, but Nokia no, has dropped out of the project, but the Linux Foundation actually owns it, and Intel is still... They're in. But so they who's so, so, so what is Miko going to evolve into like an Android alternative that those of us who root our phones can use? Or uh, it's entirely, that's sort of what it is right now. Yeah, I know, but it, there's some problems that go with that. Here, here's I would have liked to see Miko succeed with Nokia because then it would have had OEM support and it because if it's just purely an alternative OS. Yeah. The likelihood of it getting any kind of mainstream market share and as hard to create a form factor as a phone. To, to be honest, what I would foresee in the coming months is Miko Intel is going to try to push it with as much hardware as they can, if they can, and I don't think they really can. Yeah, Intel's uh, not a company who can really do unless they're going to make it like required to use their mobile Atom CPUs. And that's entirely possible. <laughs> we'll, we'll give you a discount on the CPUs if you bundle them with Armigo OS. Uh, and at the same time, companies like HP are going to be pushing Web OS as hard as they can. Yeah. That's, that we'll get to that topic in a little while, though. Yeah, it, 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 it's um, I, I have mixed feelings about this. Uh, I, honestly, the thing I'm wondering on in this is since uh, Nokia dropped Linux in favor of Windows, that's what they've done here. They've said, oh, we don't want Miko, we're going to go with Microsoft, and we're going to make Phone 7 phones. Do you think Nokia will ever make Android or WebOS phones, or they're just going to make Phone 7 and that's all they're going to do, and they're going to put everything they have on Phone 7? That's what I've read. I've Th read that's the plan no, right I'm now. Right Do you now think? The, I mean, they were all in for Symbian for a while. They were all in. I thought they were for something else before that, but I'm probably wrong. Uh, there. They might. They might switch once they find out that Phone Seven fails. <laughs> I mean, well, one, one of my coworkers has a Phone Seven, and he he loves it. No, no, no. Uh, no I've tried the. the, the uh, I tried it briefly, and I didn't care for the UI. I, I, I don't care for the UI either. I'm sorry. But here, here is the thing. These people who are buying Phone 7 phones, they are like Phone 7 phone fanatics. They, they are fanboys to the factor cubed, squared, or something. The, the guy that works with me doesn't have a clue. He, just, he, he knows that it's a smartphone, it's got a screen that you can touch, and you can put stuff on it. And that's the way a lot of end users are. My parents have Android phones. No, no, it's like everybody. Them, they wouldn't know. Everybody's bashing on Microsoft, but uh, 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 with phones. But I have said this several times. Um, why I? Th it's not the phone for me. I do think they've got the grandma factor down. I do think that's something Phone Seven did get down rather well. well. <laughs> it, it's, it's got a few things. I mean, from what I've heard, its camera it does start up the fast. It, it's meant to, you know, just like their commercials say, a little. Get, out of the get way. in, get out. <laughs> it's not meant to be a total, you know, you can do everything in this phone kind of phone. At least that's what they're marketing it as. And from what I've heard, it's, it's a nice phone to do stuff quickly, though not necessarily as uh, as powerfully as iPhone or Android. Well, and, and what that's going to come down to, and this is the other reason I really wanted to see Miko take off, is because I honestly do think, and I said this, I think I, this, you were the one I was talking about with this, Jordan. I honestly do think the future of computing is as these little ARM devices become tri-core, quad-core, oct-core systems, they're going to be your little core. Basically, this will be your computer, and depending on what mode you're in, you either plug it into your laptop extension or your tablet extension or your all-in-one extension, and you just do different type of computing based on which dock accessory you're plugged into. And well, you have some sort of a combination of like Bluetooth and the near-field communication stuff that 
communicates with whatever device you're near and makes it work. Well, no, because they already have, like you, you pointed out, uh, I forget who it was. The Federal Atrix. Yeah, they, they already have that device that oh. does that. And it basically all that is is the next logical progression of these portable devices getting more powerful and like the system Lenovo's making where if you take the screen off of it, it turns into a tablet. It switches OS's, but all your active stuff, like web pages, switches from one OS to the other, so you don't break any workflow up. And, and that's honestly where I see it going. It's like you'll have a different OS, possibly just stored in a, in a solid state uh, partition in the uh, external thing. Like in, in your laptop dock, there'll be a 20 gig partition that has the laptop OS, and, and so on and so forth. That's really is where I see the computer go, going for the average consumer. Uh, it would be, uh, and, and things, Linux based operating systems really make the most sense as things stand now for that. The next ones would be like Apple's and, and Windows would be a far third. Right, and it's it, on your Apple computer, it, Apple phone. Apple yeah, and, and the, the, the Linux ones would obviously be the, the more open, uh, works with, don't really care if you bought our accessory or somebody else's accessory one. Uh, because that's obviously the, where that concern would be there. But it, it's, I, uh, it, I don't see them choosing Miko if Miko doesn't get main flavor, and I don't see it. I don't see how it can do that now. Like, like you're saying, Intel's supporting it, but I don't think Intel even has the clout to push that on people. I, uh, I, one, one good thing that can be taken from this is, I mean, I, I, I it's not that I think Windows Phone Seven is terribly bad OS, uh, because I don't know because. No, especially it, at the time it, it went in for what it is, it's not really introducing something super new, and it's no, it's going against battles. Nokia so going might, all in like this with them being as large a company as they are indirectly, I think, is good for Android in the long run. And I say that because it will force more competition, which will force more innovation in Android. Which is what I'm saying is that if. if Too, but in its current thing, I, I, why why is well, Jordan? One point thing I remembered reading from one of the comments or a message or something, uh, I do remember someone saying that Miko, Intel, and the Linux Foundation still have it, but uh, it might be shelved as a developer project or oh. as a proof of concept project for the time being. Yes, yeah, so see, it's see, entirely the, possible it could go into hibernation. It, it, that, that's the thing. I I, I I I guess dead is hard on it, but it's not alive either. Maybe it maybe stasis is the right word for it. It's in stasis, Jim. <laughs> it's on a shelf. It might get found again. It it's might. like the, the end of that one Indiana Jones movie. It's in a box in the <laughs> in the archives. It's it's, it's over there <laughs> somewhere. Uh, but you know, it's like we're talking about phone so fun. I honestly, and and this is because we're talking about Microsoft and Linux for currently. Uh, I, I personally, WebOS is personally not my favorite son, but WebOS is very loosely Linux based, and I really do think WebOS, partly because of Android f ups this year, is going to do very very well. Uh, because uh, if you looked at the pricing for all these WebOS devices that HP and, uh, uh, is pushing out, it's like they're very competitively priced for what they are. There's a, it, it, I honestly think HP's plan for WebOS is give it away until it sticks. Uh, make it a loss leader, make, make the prices right, even if they have to be loss leaders, to help establish the platform. And that strategy that the last 20 years has showed, if you have the capital to pull it off, works and works every time. So, it, 
the, the, the thing I don't know about that, and like you're saying, this is related to what we were talking about the sign. I don't know about porting WebOS to the desktop. I I, I, I get the idea, but it, yeah, I'm. It just doesn't strike me as a desktop OS. I mean, it's or, or maybe I'm being pessimistic there, but it. Do, do we really see that working in that form factor? For the average end user, possibly. For the uh, any sort of tech savvy end user, maybe not. Uh, and it depends. I mean, it, it might work for one desktop if you have multiple at home. But for a lot of people, like, like I say, and if if they're average, if they're just using internet, email, uh, instant messaging, things like that, something like WebOS would work, especially because it does support multitasking. If it's someone who wants to do tweaking, any a normal Linux user for the most part, uh, it probably won't work for them. But it's good to have choice. Yeah, well, and this is one of those things I'm kind of disturbed by. This is a growing trend in the computer industry as a whole, that we want to take these powerful computers and make them simple toys. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, yeah, I like... I, I think the biggest thing about WebOS com the desktop, you mentioned simplifying the desktop, but it's something that Google should have done with Android by this point. Uh, in, in which respect? There's a couple of ways in, you can mean there. In, well, in bringing it to the desktop, just because... Well, I mean, they're working on Chrome OS as a laptop mobile type thing, but for a desktop that's pretty much always going to be online, I don't know. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, no, I'm just saying, if, if anything should have come to the desktop, the Android should have first. And there, there are projects out there to port it over, but they're always one generation behind. I was testing out the uh, Android 2.2 x86 uh, build, and it, it works. Well, I, don't know, I, I don't know if I would like Android coming to the desktop. Store well, no, no, well, no, no, no. He, he, well, here's here's the thing. Um, the, it's there are there's really four main companies right now. There's Apple, Microsoft, HP, by virtue of buying Palm with WebOS, and Google. These are like the four companies barring for what is the future of computing user interface and general how we do day-to-day -day management of to data. You Nokia in there with Microsoft, but yes. Well, no, well, no, I, I put Microsoft in there. It's like, yeah, it, I know. But you don't count. Just Nokia slash Yeah, Microsoft, well, it's like, but Nokia slash HP. Yeah. Well, yeah, but there, well, there are the, all the subsets, and you can go on forever. Right. But the, it, it's uh, the re the reason I was classifying the way it is is because there's the three companies, Apple, HP, and Microsoft, and Apple's using Unix, and HP's using Linux, and yes, I deliberately fixed my fingers so I didn't make that gesture, people. <laughs> Uh, and Microsoft, that would have made that gesture, is um, uh, using their own thing. Uh, but these three companies indirectly agree the future of computing is dumbing it down. It is making the computer do less in a way that they think is elegant. Google, on the, I, I'm oversimplifying it. I'm very much oversimplifying it. Google, on the other hand, is being contrarian, I'm almost thinking for contrarian's sake. And that, like you're saying, you know, some people would like to see Android on the desktop. Well, I don't think that's ever going to come out of Google, and the reason I say that is because they see that to too much as a, like a mobile OS dumbing down the desktop computer, and it's something I think they want no part of. It's like, I, we don't care if it's the future of computing, we don't want to do it. Uh, and, and they, they may... Uh, I, I'm with you. I think they're throwing away what is going to be a market, whether any of us want it or not. And they, they definitely have the resources that they could have done it by now. I think it's one of those, rather rather it is or isn't the future of computing, they don't want to be the ones to tow it there. But it, it, it might have something to do with the type of people that generally work at Google in that... Uh, you know, they're usually the ultra-creative, you know, cutting-edge geeks, and these are people who would never, ever be happy with a platform like that. Ever, 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 ever. Uh, maybe I'm just 
blowing smoke, but uh, I think that's part of the reason that Android is not in any way, shape, or form heading towards the desktop. You know, it's tablets and mobile, and we have this thing called Chrome OS for the future of the cloud that may never be. <laughs> think as you switch form factors which OS is actually driving the computing should change. You know, you should be using an OS that's made for that form factor. I didn't make total sense. I didn't make total sense right there, but uh, <laughs> I'm hoping to yeah. Uh, I, I was able to follow the logic. I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> uh, it, Another thing uh, you're talking about how all these companies are trying to dumb down computing but, I mean, really, if you look back, that's how it's been since the start of computing. You know, that everyone's trying to, okay, I don't want the user I, 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 should, I should quantify that, because I sound like I'm a, I'm, I, I hate for anything to be user-friendly when I go off on that tangent. It's like, no, I'm not against something being user-friendly. I very much love the idea of a world where I can just give my mother a computer and I don't have to sit there for 12 hours and explain to her how it works. I, 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 I believe me, I'm a fan of that world. I really am. That's like, I, I, I love her dearly and I'll do it every time. But I'm like, you know, I really would prefer to be doing something else than explaining to you about which button to push. So I would love that simplified. I just don't want usability to get in the way of ultimate computing power. It, it, it should be user friendly, but it should be user friendly in a way that all the other stuff is still there for people who want it and are more sophisticated users. And it, it, it's always been a very fine balancing line. I don't know where you personally feel on that, Jordan, but it's one of those, like, it, sometimes usability gets in the way of, it, like, it, it lessens what you can do in some regards. It just, it's a balancing act. Yeah. How much do you take away? You're taking away too much. Yeah. Well, you know, it's. Uh, That's where it comes back to the idea of uh, GNOME three and Unity. How you've got to have a really pretty interface, and it's so new and so different that you can't really do much of anything. To well, no, see, that, that's the thing. This is a constant argument that's waged in the Linux community, and that is how how it, it where's that line between making it user friendly so more people can just use it without having a clue what the hell they're doing, and pissing off all the power users. Who are like, well, now it's a pain in the butt to do this thing. <laughs> uh, and it, 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 it's I, I, uh, one of my favorite distros, PC Linux OS. And I love it because it's not, but also because of all that usability stuff, it gets bashed a lot for that. There's a lot of people who go, oh, well, you know, I, sh I would rather be doing this this way because they made this user friendly in that way. Now it's harder to do this and that. And uh, it's like, um, I. I some of that is people trolling, and some of that is valid. Well, uh, some of that is valid so argument. It's going to be a compromise, so it's not necessarily trolling. You know, people well, well, say, the, the, difference. Th this is one of the reasons I think the big advantage in Linux is that there's dozens of distros. There's there's dozens of viable, stable distros that are forks and sub forks. If you don't like the sub fork that this one's gone on, go one up and take the other fork that you think is the right way. <laughs> it's like you have that option and uh, because of the modular nature of Linux you can both use the same stuff, usually. <laughs> uh, which I think is a win-win because there is no right answer to questions like that. Right. So all the different right answers have been done. You just have to find the one that's yours. Well, not all of it. 
Well, okay. For that right answer that hasn't been done that you just absolutely feel is necessary, James, my assignment to you is to go start a Linux from scratch project and go do that assignment. Have fun with that. <laughs> you just feel it's you just feel it's so important. Go do it. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Uh, anything else you want to say or not, or we want to move on to Android? <laughs> um, I, there's not a lot to say on that. Next, uh, I, I'm personally hoping that Jordan's theory about Android, and this is my theory too, I, I think the next incarnation of Android, Android 4, is you know ice cream sandwich both from the name and the it's the next logical step. I do think it's going to be some kind of a unifying. Uh, uh, the uh, CEO of Google actually said it was coming. Yeah, and I I, I, yeah, I, I don't think that that's his theory. Yeah, uh, well, it was it was it, it was strongly inferred but not outright said. That, that's like the fun. Here are the questions. Is it going to be the first step in that process? Yes. By the time 4 comes out, is it going to be completely done? Or is it going to be, these are the things that aren't quite here yet, but the roots of are here. You, you know, because when I, when I consider that process complete is when the following things happen. I can just write one application, and because of the way the tree and structures are set up of the OSs, it automatically, dynamically switches from optimized for tablet form factor to optimized for phone form factor without me as the developer doing anything. The OS is smart enough with the right hooks and stuff for me to write one application that equally optimizes well to both form factors. It, rather or not that will be done in Ice Cream Sandwich to the point that the developers don't have to do anything, anybody's guess. The other thing that it desperately needs Android desperately needs is a change in the architecture of the Android tree and Google needs, the sooner Google does this the better because the longer they wait the harder it's going to be to implement but what I honestly want to see them implement is a unifying architecture that modularizes the Android tree as much as the Linux core is so that Google can push updates to all Android devices and not break them because that doesn't happen right now because they allow switching with stuff and they should allow switching with stuff they should allow people to change the UI and sign but if you make the Android tree modular enough that you can upgrade the the core basically you, up, you upgrade the core underneath via a direct push from Google uh, so that all it does is make the new APIs and the new tools of the new Android OS accessible uh, so that the applications can take advantage of them, but in a way that doesn't interfere with anything else, because that's the real missing thing. It, uh, that new new tools, new features of Android wind up, but until Android actually gets updated, if you've made something that needs these new tools of Android, you can't. Your application can't take advantage of them until they upgrade. If that core could be upgraded for application's sake, it would be good enough upgrades that it, it would largely suit the needs of the end user, and Google could push that independently without breaking anything if they just change the structure of the tree a little bit. I, I don't think that's going to be ready come ice cream. I, I think that's a two, three, if ever, incarnations down the road. But that is what I think Android needs. I don't know where y'all stand on that. Uh, I think the easier it is to develop applications that would work cross-platform and by, I guess, form factor, the better. Yes. Uh, the, the way it is currently, I think you were saying this, it's not it's not working. There's got to be one way that you can do it with just sort of branching it out. Well, look, essentially what you have to do now is create two applications. You have to create the tablet application and the phone application. Right. And uh, it, and you think there could be, uh, that speaking in really high-level concepts, an if statement that says, if tablet do this, if other do that. Yeah. And still have a common set of functions, but different layouts and different use of fragmentation. The, the uh, tablets have what are called fragments, that different portions of the screen can be used for right. different items. 
and, and right yeah. right now those are independent trees and there's no reason like you said you couldn't put simple if logic tests yeah. in there and, and honestly that's what should also be built into the core the core root there should be a little if else test if ui third party stepped on top of has tied into this hook add it if ui third party has not tied into uh, add secondary desktop widget to access core Android OS features independent of UI via Android UI. <laughs> it, it, like you could do that without breaking any of the reskinning UIs and stuff. It says, okay, Android does a smart test to know, oh, they haven't added my new features yet. Let me add a desktop widget that gives the user access to them. <laughs> completely random, completely off topic. That just sparked something in my head. I would love to see Google come out with an app in the marketplace that you hit a button and it resets whatever device you're on to stock Android, whatever version, with the drivers already on the device. Well, no, no, see, but that, that, yeah. that, that, that goes in line with what I'm saying. What Android desperately needs is, regardless of the device I've bought, I can just go to my phone and type in, like, fixandroid.google.com. <laughs> it's like this, this little <laughs> thing. It's like, would, would you like to change your updates and things of Android to Google, which will be the latest current? Yes. Do you understand that this may change features on your? Yes. Do you agree that? Ye yes. You're. Please wait. <laughs> it's like, I, I would like to be able to just bypass the whole thing and have my phone talk directly to Google, who's actually making the stuff. <laughs> well, and for, for some devices that are already out, like uh, ViewSonic has a 10-inch tablet that's been out for months now that has a dual-core processor in it, and it's crap because of the uh, the AP, the excuse me, the UI they put on top of it. They use the tap-tap interface, tap-a-talk, tap-a-something, and it is so slow and, and just bogs it down, and it had really amazing specs and had not done well because of that. Well, and, and see, th this is something anybody can do by rooting their device, but it's one of those things you shouldn't have to root your device to do it. This is like you're saying. You should just be able to go to a Google website and make that choice as yeah. an end user. <laughs> and I, I realize there are security things to that. There, there, there are problems to address to make that work right, but I think they're more than addressable. And that that would be true over the air updates. You know, it's like Google comes out at the beginning of the year and says, We have this new OS and everybody, everybody will have it by April. It's like, yay, yay. As long as your device is why powerful. Rather than it's uh, <laughs> April of some year. Exactly. And, and and honestly that site should do a test. It should do a does your device meet the minimum operating specs to run this new Android? Because it's like, Android needs Y processing power, Y memory, Y, but that's a very simple logic test. Oh, uh, we've detected that you're insufficient in the following area. Do you understand that it probably won't work well, but you want to do it anyways? Okay, <laughs> it's like... <laughs> but if it's too far gone, like if it's a 400 megahertz processor, Maybe you shouldn't try to run. Well, yeah, and, and honestly, if it does that little if else test like that, it should pop up like the the, the agreed upon sign. Green, you meet you meet the criteria. Yellow, you're a little shy. Anything less than ten percent off. Red, strongly recommended that you do not do this. <laughs> Don't come crying to us if this breaks your system. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like, it's, like it, it's what Android needs to do. I, I don't know when they will, but the longer they wait to do it. I, I don't know if they will, because I have a feeling if they do that, there's going to be a lot of hardware manufacturers, a lot of OEMs that say, uh, well, if we can't bundle this stuff on it and make the money off of all the bundled software. Oh, no, 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 no. There's got to be a way to do that where it doesn't take the bundled stuff off. Uh, why, why, I hate the crapware. I really do. You're right. People will cry bloody havoc. But there are well, the people who are forcing the software on there would cry. <laughs> yeah, well, I, 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 I know, but it, there has to be a way to update everything and still leave that stuff intact. You know, to to make it modular. Because what I'm more concerned about is the updated APIs. Uh, you well, know, the people that uh, complain about the Droid X because of Moto Blur. You go to a website, you hit a button, you don't have Moto Blur anymore. You have stock Android. Yeah. Would be one website. Well, but that, that, that's the UI. 
I, I, it, the type of stuff that people would complain about would be like like Verizon bundles their, uh, their hotspot stuff, their hotspot yeah. a thing like that, and, and you know okay they should leave that on there, uh, and I'm sure there's a way to leave that. We have detected the following bundled applications. Okay. We well, and actually, actually, the uh, the Verizon has a specific point in their market where you can go look for Verizon apps. Yeah, it's like yeah, they have added another market. You're right. <laughs> so that they could, they could just keep pushing out their own market. I guess I don't know. Anyway, it, uh, it, it's a fine line between yeah. giving the user what they want. It's not. It's like this is why I thought we needed the flagship device. And, and honestly, I would love nothing more than to see uh, some manufacturers start taking advantage of things like LightSquare to just say, we're just going to sell a link device that's data only uh, and do what you want. And I, I'd love to see that. But it's, they fight each other and we lose. We, the consumer, lose. <laughs> it sucks. The other thing that's going on in Android, um, it's Sony is clearly supporting Android. Sony clearly likes Android, you know, they're, they're clearly an unofficial, official Google partner, you know, they're making a PSP Android device, although, and we were going to talk about this on PC vs. Mac, and it showed up this week, uh, there's, you know, they have an Android PSP phone coming out, and then they have another PSP phone coming out, which is a better phone, but is running all of Sony's stuff, not Android. <laughs> Uh, so, it, it, you know, how much support for Android and Linux does Sony really have? You know, do we think they'll start making more games? Do you think that, do you think they realize that they should port all of that stuff over here and make them a lot of money? Or do you think they're going to just kind of half-ass it and not really commit? I think the best we can hope for is getting things to Android and maybe getting games to Android from Sony. But any further than that... I wouldn't. I wouldn't count on it. So, aside from using, oh god, I forget, uh, free Darv Dalvik or whatever. <laughs> Android Dalvik. Android Dalvik. Yeah. Or alien. The, yeah. Alien Dalvik. Yeah. Yeah. Alien Dalvik. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, on your Linux, on your Linux desktop, you, that's pro that's probably the best you can hope for. They're probably never going to natively move over. Which, which you know, I, I I've never I've never got. Well, yeah, it, well, yeah, okay, it is natively it's moving on. Native seamless. Yeah, 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 okay, uh, uh, yeah okay. Uh, yeah, I'm splitting hairs, but it's one of those things. I've never got Sony's lack of Linux support and hate of, and hate of Linux. Like, they sued the guy who put um, Linux on the PlayStations, and I'm like, eh, da -da -da, uh, you mean that? Uh, but it's like, I don't get that, because, like, the PlayStations run Linux. So what if I'm changing which Linux it is? That's my prerogative. You know, it's their quote-unquote supporting Android, but yet not. It, it's one of those, I, I, I did, can't ever... Didn't it make it easy? I, I, I don't know, I don't own a, a PS3, but didn't it make it easier to, to pirate games? Uh, well, that, that, see, that was one of the things you could do, and that because you changed the OS, you could... Actually, now, now I do remember reading about that. He, he, he disabled that in his specific... Uh, ROM, Flash, whatever it was. Yeah, he hacked the um, DRM. But he, but he disabled the ability to, to use the pirate games. I remember I saw an interview with him a while back. So uh, even though that was one of their complaints about people that were, were hacking the PS3, cracking, whatever you want to call it, uh, that it wasn't one that should have been directed at him, if I remember correctly. Oh, yeah, but no, 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 no. He was the one who enabled it by showing the way. <laughs> so they... <laughs> Like, uh, so, so even gonna, though you're not doing this, you laid the groundwork for others to guilty by association. <laughs> you, you laid the groundwork for people to not give us more money. Yeah, we want right. money because we like money. Well, and, and you know, the, the, this is the, in my youth. I was a real fan of fuck them. They make too much money. As of late, you know, for like the last five to seven years, I have grown up a little bit. And my honest assessment is: figure out a way to do it legally because <laughs> there are ways to do it legally it's like I, I, I'm not interested in circumventing DRM 
I'm interested in fixing the De'Aaron thing. Like, it, I, I could watch Netflix things on my Linux box. I could rip Audible things and turn them to MP3s so I can play them. I prefer the solution of Alien Dalvik, so I can just use their app with their DRM that really shouldn't exist in the first place. But fine, they're idiots. I'll cater to their stupidity. <laughs> I, I, give me a legal way. <laughs> I'm not interested in stealing. <laughs> I have plenty of free shit already. I don't need everything to be free. <laughs> but, you know, different mentalities. I, I, you know, that's like one of the few things that is missing over on the Linux side. Real, real game support. It, it's, um, I, I realize there are some Linux games, but they're not the mainstream games. Th these are like the three things we need on Linux. We need game, a couple of gaming companies to support it, like, if Steam and Sony supported Linux, that, that's it. Gaming's on Linux. But, <laughs> like you're saying, probably not going to happen. 